Well, the horses are the real stars of the show here at Saratoga, but there are human stars. They're called jockeys, and we've got the winningest jockey of all time here at Saratoga to tell you about a day in his life as a jockey. Here's Jerry Bailey. Uh, normally, jockeys, we rose at between 5.30 and 6 o'clock in the morning and headed out to the racetrack for our morning workouts, if you will. And morning workouts really are comprised of visiting barns that you would ride for trainers in the future, maybe that day. You'd be visiting the mounts, the horses, if you will, that you're going to ride in the next day, two, maybe in the next week or two. A lot of PR, a lot of selling yourself to the trainers. So it would be you and your agents, one of your two employees, that would go from barn to barn to barn visiting these trainers, lining up the mounts that you will ride in the future, and possibly exercising those mounts that very morning. So that takes about two or three hours. The, the training hours are typically from 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning until about 10 a.m. in the morning. But a jockey's work in the morning is usually wrapped up by about 9, 9.30, 9.45. But pretty much by 11 o'clock in the morning, I would make my way back to the track, the track itself and head to the jockey's room. Right behind me, you see the entrance to the jockey's quarters. The very first thing that I do when I hit the jockey's quarters is weigh myself. Come on in, we'll do this. All right, this is the good news or could be the bad news for a jockey on any particular day. Generally, believe it or not, I can feel my ring on my finger or my watch on my wrist and tell about how much I weigh within a pound. Uh, if, it was a, if it was a fruitful night with food the night before, uh, a lot of liquids, it could be pretty tight and I'm expecting bad news when I step on that scale. So this would be either put a smile on my face or a frown on my face because determining on the weight would determine how much time I have to spend in the steam room. We're going to enter the jockey's room here, and as you'll see, nobody in the jockey's room during racing hours except the jockeys and their employees. All right. <laughs> when you first arrive in the jock's room, if you have to get in the sweat box, which I did almost every day, even if it was for 20 or 30 minutes, you sit down here, you disrobe, your, your valet takes your clothes, hangs them up, you put a towel on, then you head for the sweat box. Let's take a walk over there right now. Yeah. <laughs> So we're back here in the steam sauna area, it's kind of an echoey in here, and again, another scale. I can't get away from the scales. My day was pretty much go in here, get in, the, get in the shower, shower off, go in the steam room for about 25 to 30 minutes. I would, I would do a little calisthenics, I would stretch, I would shave, I would just loosen up basically, if you will, and I would lose a pound, a pound and a half in there doing that. This is the masseur's room. Another uh, pretty good place for a jockey to cool down, regroup. I might come in here and lay down with a towel over me for 15 minutes or 20 minutes. I told you I might take a, a little brief nap. It would probably happen here. It's actually a tool for, for uh, cooling out, but if, if a rider doesn't have to lose any weight, this is a great way just to relax. And if he's had a fall in, in recent times, it might be a way of, of loosening up those sore muscles or just relax for a day. But the masseuse is a really handy tool for every jockey to use at least once a week and some guys use it every day. There's a lot of moving parts in the jocks room. Um, there's a lot of equipment. But we're going to start with what was typically my home in the jocks room. We call it our corner as jockeys. We each have an individual locker and we have one valet that takes care of us from one to as many as five jockeys at one particular time. So come on in. So this was my corner when I was riding. I call it my corner. I shared it with several other jockeys and uh, the equipment, the actual saddles, are, are located down below. And, and I'll pull out one saddle here. This is a particularly big saddle. Uh, let me get a smaller saddle. This saddle would weigh about, oh, probably about three and a half or four pounds. This saddle would weigh about a pound and a half. You can see the difference. And you would use this saddle on horses that are weighted with higher weights, unless you're very heavy that day. And this saddle would obviously be used for horses with lesser weights. The jockey really doesn't handle the equipment. The valet, or as we call the valet handles. He gets the saddles ready for each particular race. He cleans your goggles between races because you use multiple sets of goggles on your helmets. One of the most important things that a valet is here for is to make sure your equipment is excellent shape. You don't want a saddle that's ragged. You don't want unsafe equipment. So not only does he clean your, your equipment, he makes sure it's in tip-top condition. 
But before the silks go on for each particular race, we'll put on our, our safety vest. It's called a flak jacket, if you will. Uh, it's to minimize uh, injuries if, if and when we fall. And it's not a question of if you're going to fall, it's when in, in, uh, in this business. It's the only business I know that the ambulance follows you. So yeah, it's a risky business. I personally broke 17 bones in the 31 years that I rode. So it's going to happen. You just hope it's not a, a real severe injury and you hope you can minimize it with the, with the helmet that you use and the safety vest. But those are the only two things that we have to protect us. We go around 42 miles an hour at full speed on the racetrack during the course of the race. And this is all we have. We have a helmet, we have a small little flak jacket. So jockeys are very good athletes. They're in very good shape and they do take injury pretty well. Uh, it's, it's pretty much a proven fact that jockeys recover as fast as any other athlete from their injuries. Basically because we don't have guaranteed contracts. If we don't ride, we don't make money. If we're sitting hurt on the sidelines, there is no income. So a jockey is pretty much motivated to get back and recover from injury as quickly as they can. Uh, and that's kind of the, the bad side of it. You've seen the, the weight losing, early mornings, possibility of injury, but there's a lot of good side too. There's a lot of thrill and personal satisfaction from winning. And part of the winning is preparation. And this is where the preparation starts. Not only exercising the horses in the morning that you might ride in the future, but reading the daily racing form. The Wall Street Journal, if you will, for jockeys. It contains all the past performances of the horses that you will ride that day and the horses that you will ride against. So as a jockey, I pretty much studied the daily racing form. I did it right here. I brought it in. I put it in my, my box. I went and lost my weight. I, I maybe had a, a cup of tea or something. Almost no lunch for me. I might have a piece of fruit due the middle of the day. But I've lost my weight, I've come back here, I've gotten dressed, I grab my racing form and I, I grab my bench and I sit and I get prepared for the races. So now that I've got my knowledge, I've got my weight lost, I've got my equipment on, then it's out to the paddock to get on my horse. My valet will have brought me back my whip. He takes, his, he takes your saddle and your whip out there, he saddles the horse, he brings it back, hands you your whip. I've got my, my silks on, I'm ready to go ride my horse. So let's go out to the paddock. It, it's unique in Saratoga that they walk through the crowd, and it's, it's, it's for a reason. We love to interact with the fans here at Saratoga. They're really nice, and all the kids, even adults, love the autographs. So, so as, we, as a jockey enters the paddock in the walking room, in, the horse will already have been saddled, and he goes now to meet the owner and her trainer and kind of get last minute instructions, even though I was pretty well prepared and knew in my mind how much and how I wanted to ride each particular horse. It's always good to have a conversation with the trainer because they might disagree with you. They might see the race unfolding a different way. So that's where the, the paddock and the, uh, the meet and greet will happen with the jockey and the owner and trainer who are already waiting for you after they've saddled your particular horse. So here we go. Horses are saddled in the saddling enclosures over there that saddle's actually put on tightened up, ready to go, and each individual tree has a number on it, so if I'm riding number 11, I've got to go over to that tree over there with number 11 on it, and that's where my horse will stop. So I'll go over and I'll get on him. So once the jockey's mounted, he's off the track, we'll warm up the horse for four or five minutes, give me a chance to feel the horse out if I've never ridden him before, gives me a chance to feel how he moves, uh, but mostly it's just for the horse to limber up before the race. The race is off, hopefully we win. The team that was just here discussing instructions will be, have big smiles on their face and will be happy and we'll all make a lot of money.